In the last video we saw that the center of gravity of a system is the unique point about which the sum of the moments of the gravitational forces or weights on the system is zero. Let's look at this example here. We have a system consisting of three particles. Now these three particles are part of a horizontal triangle. Okay, So we are actually looking down on the system here. So these three particles are at the same height above the surface of the Earth. So this distance here is not the height of the particle above the surface of the Earth. That height is into the screen. The weight of this particle is 4 newtons. If you want its mass, you need to divide 4 by 9.81. Okay, we, are, we don't need the mass actually, it's the weight that we want. Um, although we could actually work with the masses and get what's called the center of mass of the system. And, you know, we would have essentially have the same problem. But anyway, okay, we have the weights of the three particles that are, those weight vectors are into the screen, so I cannot show them in this plan view. Here is a rough sketch of an oblique view of the system. Okay, so roughly speaking, whereabouts is the center of gravity of the system? Well, you can see that, you know, we have greater force at these two points than we have at the, this corner of the triangle. We only have a 1 newton force, so we would expect the center of gravity to be close to these two points, okay? Um, because that's where most of the force is. So let's call the coordinates of the center of gravity x, y. What's the magnitude of the resultant force on the system? Well, all the vectors are pointing in the same direction, so we just add up the magnitudes to get 7 newtons. Okay, let's apply the principle of moments. We can take the sum of the moments of the force of the gravitational forces on the system about any point or axis. Now in this problem, it's much easier to take the sum of the moments of the weights about an axis. So let's start by considering the sum of the moments about the y-axis. Okay, this is something that we haven't done in previous videos, but it's just much easier to solve it this way, rather than taking some point like say the origin, where the distances are much more complicated, much more difficult to get. Okay, let's start with the 2 newton force. We want the moment of the 2 newton force about the y-axis. So we want the perpendicular distance of the line of action of the 2 newton force to the y-axis. So here you get a better idea of it in this oblique view. Well, um, this distance here is none other than the x value of the coordinates of this point. So to get the magnitude of the moment of the 2 newton force about the y-axis, we multiply the magnitude of the force, which is 2, by this distance, this perpendicular distance here, which is 2. So we get 4 newton meters. That's the magnitude. Okay, what about the sine? Well, okay, um, it depends on which side of the y-axis that the force is acting. If it's acting on one side, it has one sine. We could make this sign positive, but it doesn't actually matter. We could make it negative and take points on the other side to have a positive moment, okay? Actually, it's a bit easier to, to take this to be positive, consistent with the fact that the sign of this x value is positive. So it's easier to follow that convention. Um, as for the force, well, it's pointing downwards. You might think, oh, that's a negative force. That was the convention in previous videos, but it's a bit easier actually to take the downwards forces as being positive in this type of question. Okay, so all we have to do is look at the sine of the x value and uh, multiply by the downwards force to make, just make it positive. So we get 2 by 2, which is 4. Now let's look at this point here. Well, on this diagram, this is the distance that we're after. This distance is 1. Okay, given by the x value of the point. Um, now, but the turning effect of, of the f this force about the y-axis is going to be opposite in direction to the turning effect of the 2 newton force about the y-axis, okay? So this force is t has a turning effect in this direction, whereas this force has a turning effect in the opposite direction. So the turning effect or moment of the 4 newton force would be negative. And we just go by the sign of this value, it's minus 1. So we multiply minus 1 by the magnitude of the force, which is 4, so we get minus 4 for the turning effect of the 4 newton force. Finally, we have the 1 newton force. Well, 
we make the moment or turning effect of this force positive. Okay, it's at a distance of 7 meters from the y-axis. So it's 7 times 1, which is 7. So we get an answer of plus 7 newton meters. Now notice that this is different from previous questions we, where we took the moments of the forces about a particular point. Here we're taking the moments of forces about different points. We took the moment, we took the uh, moment of this four, uh, four newton force about this point here. We took the moment of the two newton force about this point here. We just, I'm um, sorry, we're not doing the x-axis yet. See, we we took the moments about different points. Um, but what's important, of course, is that the points are all on the same axis. In this case, the y-axis. So we, we now have the sum of the moments about the y-axis. So by the princi principle of moments, the sum of the moments of the gravitational forces about the y-axis is the moment of the sum of the gravitational forces about the y-axis. Okay, so here's our point xy. The distance to the y-axis is given by the x-value. So this is x. x could be positive or negative. It's more likely to be positive in this example. As a matter of fact, it does turn out to be positive, but it doesn't have to be, of course. And... Uh, so how do we do that? Well, we take the force, which is 7. So we just take our force to be positive in all these examples. Downwards is positive, And multiply by x, the perpendicular distance of the line of action of the resultant force to the y-axis. So 7x must equal 7 by the principle of moments. So we get x equals plus 1. So we have the x value of the coordinates of the center of gravity of the system. So that tells us that the center of gravity must lie on this line here. Okay, this is the line x equals 1. It's a vertical line passing through 1. But whereabouts on this line is the center of gravity? We don't have enough. We want to pinpoint the center of gravity exactly. So now what we do is we consider the moments of the system about the x-axis. Okay, so let's start with the 4 Newton force. Um, we want the perpendicular distance of the 4 Newton force, or the line of action of the 4 Newton force, to the x-axis. So that's given by the y-value of the coordinates of the point. So that's 2. So that's shown on this diagram here. So we need to draw in a dotted line that's parallel to the y-axis in this oblique view. So this distance is 2. So we're assuming that the three particles lie in the xy-plane, and the xy-plane is horizontal above the Earth's surface. So the height of these particles above the Earth's surface is, this, is constant, it's the same. So what's the moment of the, of the 4 Newton force about the x-axis? Well, we just multiply 4 by 2. We just make it positive, okay, because the sine of the y-value is positive. That's the easiest thing to do here. So that's going to be 8 Newton meters, plus 8. Now what about the moment of the 2 Newton force about the x-axis? So I'll draw in a line here parallel to the y-axis. This distance, as you can see, is 3. So the y value is, is plus 3. So this is 3. So we multiply the force, which is 2, by 3 to get 6. So it's got a positive moment. Okay. If the point was below the x-axis, we would have a negative moment. The y value would be negative. The turning effect would be in the opposite direction, around the y-axis. Okay. Finally, we have the 1 Newton force. Now, the 1 Newton force is on the x-axis. So its moment or turning effect about the x-axis is 0. The perpendicular distance of the 1 newton force to the x-axis is 0. So we just get 1 times 0, which is 0. So we end up getting 14 plus 14 newton meters. So the turning effect is, overall, it's positive. That's the turning effect of the system about the x-axis. So now we can, we can consider the moment of the resultant gravitational force, or the sum of the forces about the x-axis. Um, so we want to multiply 7 by y. y is the y value of the center of gravity, of course. Now y could turn out to be positive or negative. Well, it's clear in this situation that y is going to be positive. The center of gravity has to be up here somewhere. It can't be down here, below the x-axis. So we equate these and we solve for y. So we end up getting y equals plus 2 meters. So now we have the coordinates of the center of gravity of the system. So this means that for some situations, we can replace our system 
of three particles in the positions shown um, with a single particle located at this position here. So we can say that the gravitational force of the system just acts at this single point um, and that force is 7 newtons. Okay. The center of gravity of a system is also the balance point of the system. So um, let's imagine that we connect our three particles to the center of gravity by light rods, rods that are so light that their mass is effectively zero. Well, in reality, the mass of anything is always a bit above zero. Um, you know, um, but let's just suppose that the mass is zero, okay? If we attach a string to the center of gravity, um, if we hold up the system, the, the three particles will lie in a horizontal triangle. The system will be balanced at the center of gravity. We could also imagine perching the center of gravity on top of, say, a needle or maybe whatever, and again, the system should balance well it would be an unstable equilibrium actually, but it is an equilibrium point um, for this system.